Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat better. Good morning. Good morning. It is nice to see you all this morning at Hunton Baptist Church uh, early service. And those that are visiting us online, thank you for visiting live with us. We appreciate you and know that you are as much a part of this church um, visiting us that way. Also, if you're a first time visitor, um, we would like you to fill out a welcome card. Um, it's in the pew in front of you. If you would just fill that out and just put that in the offering plate as you leave today. And that way we have a chance to thank you for being here. But also, I hope you know that you are always welcome here. And I hope that you feel welcomed and cared for and know that this is a place of family and worship. And we are excited to have you here. I have a few announcements I want to make for you. One, um, first, the fall festival will be coming up October 30th. That's going to be very soon. Um, it's in your bulletin. So if you have any idea of where you would like to help, you could call Kathy Truslow and let her know. Um, I'm sure that there's always places that she could use people that day. Um, just give her a holler, and she will get back with you. I just want to go over just a few things in the calendar of events. Um, Monday, there's a children's council meeting at 6.30. That's also going to be by Zoom, if you would like. Um, so if you want to be a part of that children's council meeting, if you're a part of that council, um, get a hold of Tanya. Just make sure to be aware of that. Tuesday is the senior adult luncheon at 10.30. Um, on Wednesday, important, that's our annual business meeting at 7.00. So if you can please come out and be a part of that annual business meeting. Um, another note, we do have our preschooler, uh, children, pre uh, babies to preschoolers class going now. Um, so if you want to stay for Sunday school and you have children, we have that class for them. So please um, know after worship that we have many Sunday school classes and we're opening up other areas uh, so all people can be a part of Sunday school. Two other announcements that I have for you is... These are back-to-back -back events that are going to be happening on November 6th, Saturday, November 6th. We're going to be wrapping up the Samaritan's Purse, and I'm going to get back to that. That'll be the first thing that starts that day at 10, but also at 11, um, and kind of after the ending of the Samaritan's Purse um, packaging, there's going to be a stained glass craft for kids, and that'll be on Saturday, November 6th at 11. But let me go back to Saturday... November 6th at 10 a.m. We are going to be packing up all the Samaritan's Purse boxes. Anybody that would like to come and help do that, um, we greatly appreciate that. And that'll be November 6th at 10 a.m. And then if you want to stay and you had kids, they can stay for the stained glass. Um, right now we're going to watch a small video on Samaritan's Purse. Thank you. Mi nombre es Romina Alejandra Ruiz Aragón. Yo tengo 12 años y me gusta mucho dibujar y cocinar. Un día yo estaba dibujando y quería unos marcadores y le pregunté a mi mamá si me podía comprar, pero ella dijo que no podía porque no tenía dinero. Hoy nos dieron unas cajas y eso me hizo sentir muy emocionada. Cuando abrí la caja y vi que tenían estos marcadores, me sentí muy emocionada porque vinieron cosas que yo nunca pude tener, pero ahora, gracias a Dios, tengo. Yo aprendí de Dios a través de la cajita. Oré hoy para que Jesús entrara en mi corazón. Y estoy muy agradecida con todos, con Dios, con ustedes por traerme esta cajita.
Hey, you may be seated. So good to see you this morning. Glad you're with us for worship. And that is what we're about here at Hunton, is worship. We come in various churches, do various things in terms of mode of worship. We, of course, have our own style and particular approach to it. And we hope and pray that you're committed to that. We are uh, going to be addressing that a little bit more in the message this morning. I want to let you know that we have a number of folks who are struggling right now. Gator Davis, who's been in the hospital for over a week, um, just in the last day or two, went into palliative care. And so it's not looking good for Gator. He's trying to keep him comfortable and the medicines that he needs. Um, he's got the lung cancer now that had gone from the bladder. He had had throat cancer before. So Gator's been through a lot. I want to lift him up and also Carol Donovan. Both of these are at VCU Medical Center right now. Carol actually suffered a, I guess we'd say a mild stroke. It impacted her speech. Um, but when I spoke with her yesterday, her speech was better, and they've been working with her on therapy, and she's actually hoping she can get home soon, but as you know, she, she's on dialysis three days a week, so it's a tough go for, for Carol. So remember Carol and Gator in your prayers, and then those who went through surgeries this week, uh, Addison Gallagher uh, on Monday, and then Wednesday, Cheryl McBee, and then Joan Lee. And then on Thursday, Barbara White Cotton. And on Friday, um, Sharon Perkins was scheduled to have surgery, but unfortunately that got put off for a week. So she'll have that this Friday. You'll see those names in your bulletin. Just remember those folks uh, in those specific ways, if you would. And then those families who are grieving. We want to remember Mary Wolf right now and the loss of her sister. This was her last sibling and talking with Mary yesterday, uh, they did have a funeral service or funeral mass earlier this week or Friday maybe, and then tomorrow is a burial. Uh, this is near Manassas, Virginia. So please lift up Mary and her family to the Lord. And also uh, Elaine Broach and Diane Plunkett and um, Joe Broach too, that family as they lost dear Donnie, one of our faithful members here you know Donnie and Elaine would they'd be sitting what about right here perhaps Elaine they both went through COVID Donnie was in the hospital 34 days just never got any better and finally his lungs gave out on him I want to pray for Elaine who also contracted COVID but she's doing much better she didn't have to go to the hospital but pray for her as we'll be gathering this coming Friday. There's an obituary in this morning's newspaper. Be gathering this Friday over at Staples Mill um, Chapel of Blyleys. And that'll be at 10 o'clock for visitation. And 11 o'clock will be the celebration of life, followed by interment at Forest Lawn Cemetery. So thank you for remembering Elaine and family and your prayers to the Lord for that. I noticed this week, uh, a couple of days ago, or maybe yesterday, that there was a nice celebration which happens every couple of years, I believe, remembering, talking about remembering lives, remembering those, particularly the policemen who have uh, lost their lives in the line of duty, and uh, perhaps other first responders. I Today, I, I just would like for us to include that in our prayer this morning, to Pray for those families who have lost loved ones in that kind of a service. Um, it's, it's something that it's hard to even imagine. And it's hard to, for me to imagine personally going out day after day and putting your very life on the line. And that's what these folks do. And I am so grateful for each and every one of them. So I want to just include them today as we pray. And also, of course, remember our offerings and our tithes and Thank you for your faithfulness and continuing to give back to God in that way. We are so grateful for your faithfulness. That means a lot. So as we pray, let's remember all of this. Father God, we are ever grateful for your presence with us. Thank you for this hour of worship. 
Lord, may we continue to sing and to pray and to preach and to listen and to reflect all uh, aspects of worship. May we never lose sight of the fact that you care about our every need. Lord, today you know that we are lifting to you the concerns of our community here at Hunton. We ask that you continue to be with these whose names have been mentioned as well as so many other ones who are continuing to have various struggles. Lord, be with those who've lost loved ones and give them comfort and peace as well. Help us this day to consider the needs of others even before our own. May we be less self-centered. May we be more about you and those whom you have created and given unto us. We ask that you continue to be with the Hemsworth family as well as they carry on without dear Bob. Lord, we thank you for the fact that we can live in a society where we do have those who are willing to step up and to serve our communities, such as those of the police force, those, of, those firefighters, uh, for other first responders, EMTs. Lord, we just thank you for their very lives that are put on the line each and every time they go out. May we not take them for granted. And Lord, help us to also remember those who are out there serving in the medical community, doctors and nurses and others, and, and obviously our teachers and our students, Lord, especially. We pray for them. Thank you, God, for giving us this day to, we pray, give back to you. And a way of doing that, too, is through our financial giving. May we realize that your work must be carried on, and it does need to be sustained through financial resources. May we never lose sight of the fact that we have everything we have because of you. Sometimes we think about going into a restaurant and if we get good service, you know, we're tipping 15, 20, 25 percent. What are we giving back to you? Let's remember that. Help us to do that, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue our praise. <laughs> You are. 
You know, we're so glad that you choose to come out at this hour and in this weather. A little chillier this morning, wasn't it? What do you think? Burr. Burr. Falls in the air. That's right. It is that time of year. But what a better place to be and what better thing to do than to come and worship our Lord and God. And so as we're here together, we are grateful that we have this privilege. Um, I see Benjamin Brown is here and Sister Hello. Lily. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Benjamin's been hard at work at school at Regent University over in Virginia Beach. And so we continue to lift him and glad that he was able to get back today. And as I've said before, it's so good over time. We're seeing more and more of our folks returning and we pray for various ones in terms of their health, as we mentioned earlier. And we just ask that we can continue to move forward in our faith. Trust in the Lord. There was a particular Sunday where the pastor mentioned from the pulpit and made an announcement and said that there would be a meeting of the church board immediately after the service back at the, in the, at the back of the sanctuary. Well, apparently at the close of the service, the church board, they gathered at the back of the sanctuary for this announced meeting. But it seems that there was a stranger in their midst. It was somebody who had visited that day and had never actually attended their church before. And so the pastor addressed him and said, My friend, we were glad that you could be here for worship today, but I don't know if you understand that this is a meeting of the board. And the visitor said, Well, I can't imagine anybody being more bored than I am after that sermon today. So, well, hopefully that won't be the case with you. That is sort of the gist of the message today in terms of being bored. Are we bored or are we on board? That's the question this morning. Speaking of being on board, there were those who were on board and on fire in the early church. We read about that in the book of Acts. And today we're reading from the second chapter of Acts. And we're going to begin here at verse 41. This is just following the incredible sermon at Pentecost by Peter and those who had uh, come to know the Lord through that and the Holy Spirit given, all those things that came upon them. So it says in verse 41 in chapter 2, So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And we would probably say reverence today, too. And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and distributed them to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Praise God for this record in the Holy Scripture for us that we can hear and try our best to understand and discern things from it, such as we are seeing today through the Lord's message. Well, this morning I'm going to be following Robert Griffith's outline to help us here to consider the type of church that God wants us to be here in the 21st century. It's not the kind of church that we attend or we're aligned with. No, this is the kind of church we truly are in our very essence. It's not enough that we come to a building on Sundays. It's not enough that we sing praise songs and hymns, that we take communion, that we give our offerings, or that we even sit through or perhaps endure the sermon. It's not enough that we come to a gathering that we call the church if we fail to truly be the church. 
What are the characteristics of the church which Jesus birthed and promised to build? The Holy Spirit had come upon Peter here and the other apostles, and, and, and they began to, to preach the gospel of Christ, and they did so in Jerusalem with, with great success. Many people believed in the gospel, and they embraced the salvation that's offered in Christ, and of course the church was born. Now that's been a couple of thousand years ago. But when it's functioning properly, the church which Jesus Christ birthed and promised to build truly is, was, has been, and is the hope of the world. Jesus is the ultimate hope, but we as His ambassadors, as His messengers, we, friends, are the hope of the world. And I would say this today. No Christian has any right to complain about the state of the world if he or she is not committed to the church. It must begin with us, friends. And there's so much that's going on in the life of the church and so much more that needs to go on as we are church, doing church and being church. The church then and now, I'd like for us to consider five or six main characteristics which are really important. First of all, the church grows warmer through fellowship. Maybe you're like me and you, you just hear that word fellowship and you hear that word warmer and you're like, yeah, I know what that's about. There's something about the fellowship of the church that warms your heart, that really lifts you up and lifts your spirit. You see, that's what the church that we just read about was doing, this early church. In verse 42 here, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship. And then 44 through 46, all the believers were together, and they had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, much in the way of fellowship. They were devoted to fellowship. They were sharing their lives with one another. They were becoming a family. Today, as we know, we, we live in a world where, where families are more fragmented and even disintegrating. We know that di divorce, for example, is an ever-present reality. We've experienced that in our church. But it's not just divorce that causes families to splinter. We live in a mobile society. Kids grow up and, and they move away. Sometimes they even move, move over to Southside. <laughs> you know, you just, you just never know. People move in and move out of neighborhoods and homes because of job transfers and, and new opportunities. Now, while some of you, I know, have lived in the same place for most of your lives, there are many other people all around you here even today who did not grow up in this area. Many of our families are far away, and, and we may find ourselves somewhat displaced and even lonely. We live in a world where family is no longer a constant for many people, no longer something we can count on. All around us, there are people who feel disconnected, who long for closeness with other people, but they don't know where to find it. They try civic organizations golf clubs, various community groups, but something is still missing. And of course, the COVID pandemic certainly hasn't helped matters. Do you remember, like I do, when it was running as various series, The Waltons? Do you remember The Waltons? Maybe you can still catch it on cable. The Waltons on TV uh, many years ago. And do you remember how everyone lived together? Grandma, Grandpa, 
Zeb and Esther Walton, mom and dad, John and Olivia Walton, and seven children. Oh, don't you love the names? John Boyd, Jason, Mary Ellen, Aaron, Benjamin, Jim Bob, and little Elizabeth. This was a true family. And we got to see them in action every week from 1971 to 1981. And that show did, indeed, tapped into a need in every single one of us. Every member of that family was able to rely upon every other member of the family. And why was that? Because they were a true family. And perhaps many of us wish our families were even a little bit more like the Waltons. We long for a simpler time when families stuck together and took care of one another. Some of us have families like that, but many of us don't these days. Maybe there's estrangement of some sort in your family, and how difficult that is. You see, that's one reason why God created the church. He created it to be a family where real fellowship and community are experienced where the members can count on one another for support, love, and encouragement. Have I, I have seen that here as your pastor time after time after time over these seven-plus years. And that's why God wants us to be a church that grows warmer through fellowship. So I'm hoping that we, each of us, will take some steps over the next year and be very intentional about this so as to increase the level of fellowship in our church and to make sure that we are functioning the way God wants the church to function. I want to encourage you all to embrace those opportunities as the Holy Spirit leads you into this deeper heart of God and, and what His purpose is for His family as the church. May we indeed grow warmer through fellowship. In the second place today, the church grows deeper through discipleship. Now, how many times have I been talking about discipleship over the past 18 months to two years? It's been a lot. It's very important. Discipleship is a word that basically means learning to follow Jesus. How about that? Learning to follow Jesus. This is what the church did that we read about in Acts chapter 2. They were very much about this. In verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. These Christians, these early Christians, wanted to grow in their new relationship with God and Christ, and they wanted to mature in their Christian walk. They wanted to learn about Jesus so they could become like Jesus. In a sense, I guess we could say here in 2021, they wanted to know Christ so they could make Him known. Does that sound familiar? So they were devoted to what those who had been with Jesus were teaching them. Oh, how important that is. You see, Peter and others who had been with Jesus those years and experienced Him face to face in living everyday conditions, they wanted to soak that up. Tell us more. Tell us more about this Jesus. We want to know more about Him. Friends, that should be our desire today. We should want to know more about Him. Stay in God's Word. Stay in our, on our knees in prayer to the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead us so that we would have that zest and desire to better follow Jesus. They were devoted to those in a great way, who were striving to teach, teach them. In fact, devoted is a word that means committed to or dedicated to. I, I don't know how many times over the past, I don't know, year or more, I've gotten into conversation with others, and perhaps you have too, about this word commitment, right? What's going on with the world today? Where's our level of commitment it seems absent in so many cases, and it is absent oftentimes in the church. We've lost some of that. We've lost our devotion, 
And it's not being devoted to an institution. It's not being devoted to a pastor. It's not being devoted to a Sunday school teacher. It's being devoted to the Lord God, the creator of the universe, the one who gave us the church so that we might better serve him by serving others. May this be a testimony to the world that we are striving to follow Jesus. God, He wants the church to be like that. He wants the church to be filled with men and women and young people who genuinely want to follow Jesus and embrace His mission more each day. God wants people who are excited to learn more about Jesus and grow in their understanding of His mission and His purpose for us, His purpose in us, and His purpose through us. Is that you today? Are you still excited to learn about Jesus after all these years? Maybe that's the question we need to ask. Am I as excited as I used to be about wanting to know more about Christ how committed are you to sit at his feet and hang off of his every word? How devoted are you to be the, to the apostles' teaching? Which for us, of course, is the New Testament, which we read from today, a portion of that. And it is my prayer that we will recommit to being the type of church that really seeks to learn how to follow Jesus so that we might grow deeper through discipleship. Thirdly, the church grows stronger through worship. Worship. We've talked about worship a good bit already today. That's what the church in Acts 2 was doing. Verse 42 talks about how they were devoting themselves to the breaking of bread, which part, partly, anyway, refers to celebrating communion together and to prayer. And then in verse 47 talks about how they were praising God. All of these words, they're worship language. These peoples, they were taking time out to truly worship God. And I believe God has created it within each and every one of us a desire to worship Him. And when we fail to worship God, there is something missing in our lives. And we lose even our perspective on life, which is a perspective that always should place God above everything else that we experience. When we lose that perspective, worldly pleasures and worldly values begin to take over. And I know it's hard, and we're trying to make the end of the month before the money runs out, and we're trying to do that, and it's a treadmill sometimes, but we must never lose sight of who it is who is with us all along the way and give Him our utmost devotion and worship. But you know, like I do, we're surrounded by many people who are consumed by the desires of the world. Maybe those who have a certain amount of money or wealth or health. They, maybe they have fancy lifestyles. But in a lot of those cases, those folks are still searching for something to fill that emptiness inside them, which can only be filled by reaching out to the God who is reaching out to them. The French philosopher Pascal said something that so many have quoted over the years since. There is a God-shaped vacuum inside every human being which can only, only be filled by God. Have you ever noticed how great you feel when you have truly worshipped God? You know, you, you can reflect on certain experiences where it was just like mountaintop. I mean, it was worship like none other. And I hope and pray you feel that a lot on Sundays here because we really tru truly strive to focus on the Lord. Our leaders here and those who participate on our teams, they do a great job in bringing all that together. Worship is something we give to God. It's us praising God for who He is and for all of His goodness to us. 
Yet worship is also something that ministers to us. Worship is something that reminds us who God is and boosts our faith and trust in Him to get us through sometimes another day and use us in some way thus to fulfill His kingdom's work. Only then will we grow stronger through worship. In the fourth place, the church grows broader through ministry. Broader through ministry. Some people have the idea that the reason a congregation hires a pastor and ministry staff is so that they can do the work of the church. Hmm. What do you think, Tanya? The truth is, every member, okay, Every member of the church is a minister of the gospel in the church. Yes, we each have our duty there. Every member of the church is to be a minister of, of, a, of the gospel in the church. God has given every Christian gifts to use for Him. The only way the church can function as it should be is if every disciple of Jesus is using those gifts to advance the kingdom of God and to build up the body of Jesus Christ. That's what the church in Acts 2 was doing. The apostles certainly, they played a key role in leading the way, and, and we know good leadership is very important. However, all the people were letting God use each of them to minister to one another, and that's how they created such a strong community of faith. That's really what ministry in the church entails. Using the gifts God has given us to meet the needs of others and to be a blessing to God as we advance His kingdom on earth. The problem in many church communities is that ministry and service have been defined way too narrowly. Teaching Sunday school, for example, is oftentimes defined as service. Leading singing is service. Serving communion is service. But you really, if you can't do one of these things, what does that mean? These upfront things. Well, in many churches, you may feel like you must not have any gifts to use to serve with. However, the Bible says that every Christian has been given gifts, talents, and abilities by God to use for Him. And the Bible lists, as you know, in various places, a wide range of such gifts. All these talents and abilities that are highlighted. Sometimes we lose sight of those, and then that, those lists even aren't exhaustive when you think about the practical implication of doing and being church. There are examples of, of many gifts that God bestows on the church, and the Bible says that the church is only truly functioning as God desires when every member is using their gifts to glorify God. Now, part of my job as a pastor and a leader, is to strive to help you to discern and discover the gifts God has given the church through you. Others are very good about discerning those gifts. And when someone points that, out that gift in you, don't take it lightly. Be serious about it and say, well, I've never thought about that. Maybe you've never considered teaching. Maybe you've never considered working on a committee. Maybe you've never considered getting involved in missions. We should all do that. Perhaps there are ways that we can, conserve, we can serve that we're not doing right now. But friends, this is the only way that the church will grow broader, and that is through ministry. In the final place this morning... The church grows larger through missions and evangelism. 
Now, when the people of God are devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and making that sincere commitment to fellowship, discipleship, worship, and ministry, when all of those things are happening, there is an incredible natural outflow from that that we call missions and evangelism. These mean reaching people with the gospel of Christ and having them respond. When I said earlier that no Christian has a right to complain about the state of the world if he or she is not committed to the church, this is what we're talking about. Because, friends, we do make a difference to the world as God's church. We do. But we must be committed to the church, to the Lord of the church, to the body of Christ. May we be about that. Missions is what we are called to be about. Evangelism, that's the fruit of everything we do for the Lord. It is the natural outflow of a healthy church. Acts 2, 47 shows us this truth more clearly than any other verse in the New Testament. After giving us an overview of what the early Christians were doing day by day, we then see the fruit of it when the Scripture says, And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Friends, wouldn't it be wonderful to experience that on an ongoing basis? that our numbers are being added to as people are being saved. One of the things that excites me is when I go back and look at some statistics, and granted, with COVID and everything, it's been more difficult, but we actually, in 2021, and we're not at the end yet, but we've actually already increased our number of new members this year over the last two years. God is at work. And I say that too, let me also add that it's been a mixture, okay? Meaning ways in which people come to the church and, and, and come to faith. It's been a good combination of those who are transferring a membership from another local church. And people say, well, that's just trading numbers. And it is. But how exciting it is for us here when people bring those experiences that they have. Just like last Sunday at the end of the 11 o'clock service, Rod and Ruth Kunkel came forward. They have years of experience, especially in missions. And we're so excited about that. Then there are people who come on their statement of faith. And then there are those, praise God, who come through acceptance of, acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And they are baptized. That is exciting. Yesterday I had the privilege of, um, it was a busy day, I, I had the morning, <laughs> the memorial service for Bob Hemsworth right here. And then in the afternoon, I went over to the Charlottesville area and officiated the wedding of Cammie Cox and uh, Kevin Mossman. And um, they've been attending here for close to a year, I believe. And it's been real exciting to talk with them and learn about their journey. And one of the things that they shared with me was their desire soon after they're married and they are married now assuming I get the marriage licenses in this week <laughs> you know the paperwork you know it's not done to the paperwork's done right so they want to come forward they want to request membership at Hunton Baptist Church and they want to be baptized by immersion both of them have Catholic backgrounds but they realize the importance of making it known where they are and their desire, each of them, to grow in the Lord. And friends, I just can't tell you, and I hope if you don't know them, get to know them. They're, they're wonderful folks. And as I told them, they are helping to bring our average age down because they're in their early 50s. And so <laughs> that's exciting too. Um, let me... Uh, let me uh, not leave it there, but let me say this. <laughs> you know, I know you know this. We have folks who are very gifted and are right now working hard. 
you as volunteers as well, but Tanya and Paige, and they're focused on our young people and our young families. And we are seeing more of those as well because we know we have a generation to replace. And that's just the way it is. But it is exciting when you see people in their 50s who are like, okay, they're going to roll up their sleeves and get some things done and teaching and working with the children and all the things that they're about. So when I preach this kind of a sermon, and I know I will acknowledge this is not exactly the most exciting sermon in terms of the delivery, but it is, it's so foundational. And that's what I want. It's more teaching today. I want this to come across as this is something we need to be about. We saw that in the early church, and we need to emulate this as best we can because they had it right. And somewhere along the way, maybe we've waned as a church, and we need to get it back. But I say this as an example of Cammie and Kevin. I mean, and we want to see more Cammies and Kevins come in. This is what's going to happen. The Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. We're the hope for the world as we serve the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the ultimate hope. May it be so. Yes, the church, as we close here, it, it, uh, it does grow larger through missions and evangelism. We don't need some new church, uh, church growth technique. Those are coming out all the time, and I'm not downplaying them. They're, they're good. They have good purposes, but we need to get back to the basics here. We don't need a different way to be the church in the 21st century. We just need to go back to our roots. We need to go back to our roots, and we need to discover how people like us managed to get it right for so long. It was great. Whatever they were doing and not doing, however they were living out of their faith, it was working, and it was working for centuries. So we really need to know why, and we need to know why, for whatever reason, that stopped. And we have the world we have today. Both discoveries of what we were doing well and what we weren't doing, both discoveries, I believe, will give us the key to truly being the church again as Jesus always intended us to be. So, don't be bored. Be on board. Let's get on board. It'll be quite the ride, I assure you. But it'll be well worth it. Let's pray. Father, as we reflect upon who you've called us to be, May we be sincere and fervent and may we be desiring to serve you more each day. May we realize that we are to not only do church and come to church and all the things we do in that way, but to be the church. Father, we thank you so much for all that you've given us. In the, ways of the in the way of the opportunities that we have. Just the incredible privileges we have to gather together. Lord, as we gather together, maybe in one sense this is almost like a pep rally. It is worshiping you, but hopefully it also gives us the impetus, the, 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 uh, the catalyst. May it be the catalyst to spur us on so that this week we may be more dedicated to being the church you've called us to be. I thank you, Father, for allowing me to be a part of Hunton Baptist Church. May I never take that blessing for granted. And I would ask that each of us look deep within and realize how we too are blessed, all of us, in this way help us to stay focused upon you and your holy word for our day-to-day -day living and may we share the gospel of jesus christ with everyone so that they too would come to faith and come and join us in this journey we call church in jesus name we pray amen
as we sing together in our closing time today, very appropriately, thank you, Bruce, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Well, maybe for you it's, I have decided to more closely follow Jesus. Maybe you decided to follow Jesus years ago. But something has happened, maybe sort of like the church overall. You've lost a little fervor. You've gotten a little bored. It's time to get on board. Maybe you'd like to make that known today. I'll be here and welcome you if you want to rededicate, recommit your own life to the Lord. Whatever it is that you would like to share, I'm here. Perhaps you'd be like others who have come forward during the course of this year and said, you know, I'm, I've been in church a while, but I've never really made that decision for Christ. I realize that Jesus did go to the cross for my sins. I want to respond to that. And I want to be baptized in his name. Maybe today you just say, I want to be a more faithful church member. And I want to do everything I can. But more than even coming forward, just make that commitment within your heart between you and God right now. And just act that out. He'll help you. Thank you, folks, for being here today. Let us stand together and sing. Thank you all again for gathering in this way. Also, on behalf of Tanya and uh, Cheryl and Paige, I want to thank you all for your expressions of uh, appreciation for your uh, ministers here. Uh, we have uh, just so much uh, appreciation for you all, as do all the staff members here. It's been an incredible journey thus far. We look forward to the days ahead. And again, we can't do anything without you. That's, that's bottom line. May God bless you and give you a good week. Let's pray as we go. Our Heavenly Lord, we thank you for our time together. Lord, uh, may we indeed strive to be a blessing to others as you've so blessed us. May we as your church be faithful every step of the way, knowing that no matter what's going on in the course of our lives, you are there to intersect and be with us in every aspect of our lives. We thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus Christ, and in whose name we do pray and go. Amen. Amen.